Um, my name is uh, Ekaterina Siminiuk, um, also, uh, also known as Gingery in the art space. Um, I'm a teacher of English as a foreign language from Moscow, Russia. Uh, I have a background in foreign philology, the history and development of languages, and I used to learn eight foreign languages. And my professional experience includes uh, working with uh, foreign adult students in Sydney and with kids in the Moscow region. I'm also the co-leader of the Educators in View of the Language Team project. So I'm Amani and um, I'm working with uh, Jay and Lance on that project uh, called Language Cities and also Jennifer. And um, I'm, um, I've been doing uh, language learn teaching language learning for uh, for more than 20 years and um, I'm also I also founded the technology enhanced language learning special interest group at New York State TESOL and also the virtual Tel conference where we talk about emerging technologies and, and language learning. Great and I'm Jay Schnorr I'm uh, CEO of VEDEX Solutions uh, and we're focused as Lance said on a lot of different things but Mainly, we're a development and consultation firm for uh, educational VR. Um, we work on building out uh, a solution for schools to integrate uh, language learning, to integrate uh, science and content, both at the high school and university levels. And um, for me, it was never a secret that a person can learn through games, because uh, me, myself, um, I learned a lot from video games, from multiplayer games, like soft skills, and from single play games, like storytelling um, games, um, various information here and there. Um, and I also learned some empathy and emotional IQ. Well, uh, basically the way all of us learn from books and movies. And I was lucky to have a chance to work in a private elementary school where the principal trusted me. Um, and I was um, free to apply tools uh, usually that I used. Um, they used to be seen as experimental. Um, I taught kids there from five to 10 years old, and we played different uh, tabletop games, sport games, video games on a tablet, and uh, we were doing all of it using the target language. And one day uh, I decided to try, so it was in um, 2019, I guess, um, I decided to try to bring to school my very first VR device. It was a Google Cardboard like device. Um, so where you put your smartphone as a screen and I used this headset um, as a speaking practice tool at my English lessons. Um, uh, so at the end of a lesson, uh, kids were supposed to watch a short uh, 360 video and describe everything they could see in sentences, phrases, etc. So you have the same tool in, for example, Engage platform, if you know it. Yeah, you can um, load the 360 video and you can do the same things. You can think about various games like uh, description games, or you can use um, Google Earth. Or, so guess the place, guess the country or someone can close their eyes and the other student um, can describe uh, what he or she sees, for example. So it's it's really up to your imagination um, how you can uh, use uh, those tools. Um, also, uh, uh, then with my 10 year old uh, students, I used Oculus Quest. So, unfortunately, I was the only one uh, who had um, the device, but um, my students, they used uh, the browser version. Um, mm -hmm. And on the other side, um, we were lucky that uh, the kids were using this um, 2D uh, uh, version because um, we could use all 40 minutes for our class. Uh, because if you know what is, uh, a memory pills do you know what it yes, is I know. yeah yes. so i put various objects in different places and i also decided to add um gaming thing like um i had three buttons uh that uh, revealed 
um, the word gradually. So if you meet the word uh, for the first time, you open, you click on the first button and the word reveals like, like it is, for example, I don't know, pliers, there were pliers, okay. So you saw pliers and then um, I also used um, the gradual um, memorization, um, spaced repetition practice. Mm -hmm. So um, when you come the next day and if you remember the word, it's great, but if you don't, you open the uh, the other button that reveals only the first and the last letter of the word, like P <laughs> and S. And then, oh, if you remember, that's great. If not, then you open the next one and more letters reveals. So it's like, like trying to <laughs> hack your memory. If you guys are, are interested in, in empathy and also uh, whether VR can help you it can help students in terms of uh, motivating, motivating them to talk about culture and to talk about language. So I'm going to share something that I did with my students. It's going to be published, um, hopefully, in the in IEEE. Uh, so, but it's not it's not a game, but uh, it's kind of like an immersive experience in uh, in VR, where uh, the students. Uh, have to interact with uh, with uh, animations in VR versus the control group where they have to only watch a video. And actually, students, uh, when they uh, interacted with this environment, uh, it really triggered uh, a, a response that was really in-depth about bringing their own culture in VR. And actually, it also um, kind of activated uh, vocabulary words and I was really thinking of changing this into a game and see how this would also trigger uh, like vocabulary words uh, to enable them to talk about uh, topics um, um, uh, like that so getting students to uh, discuss more topics and to encourage them to to talk more in class goals I see so these teachers are at first uh, they bring in what they already know right uh, and that's just putting a textbook into um, 3d uh, and then they start to realize that the personalized learning approach allowing students to both first step engage in the content and second step develop their content can be a, yeah. a quite a powerful uh, tool for them I agree. A, a really nice and creative also way, including uh, learning the target language. Uh, um, I would also ask um, you or the audience all in all, um, would you prefer to implement more of um, multiplayer online um, games, let's say, um, with your curriculum and with your students or a single player or would it be vice versa or um, a combination of both? What do you think, like, can students learn without teachers using VR devices? I think both would be very nice. Um, I, think I think students can learn without uh, teachers. Uh, mm -hmm. But then you have to be very careful that they just don't learn phrases, but more than that. And at the moment, I I don't know really how how it's possible to learn without teachers and not just phrases like with monthly or something like that. I think that's very uh, uh, that's not enough. But yeah, I would like to, have, of course, uh, both. Um, Single player and multiplayer games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Agree. Agreed. Yeah. What, what's um, about you? What do you think? Michelle? Me? Oh, myself, Jindri. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you think the no, same? I, I'm I'm a I'm a huge proponent. I've been gaming since I was uh, able to write, I think, and um, mm -hmm. I'm a huge proponent for uh, single player mission based games for learning. I mean, I used to draw out dungeons on on graph paper. Now talk about critical thinking skills and moving your way through things. Mm -hmm. But there's a multiplayer environment and a curriculum overlay that then has to take place to allow uh, to allow the progression or guided progression of personalized learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 